everybody. Today, our auto runs through Pandemic Rising Tide, which is the latest very, very cool twist on the Pandemic formula. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, and I will, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then, welcome to the Netherlands, folks. Uh, it is, I guess, the, the uh, industrial age is on right now. And those industrious Dutch have decided to claim the sea, push it back, and grab all this land with a series of dikes that are part of setup. You put all these dikes all over the board on the spaces marked with the little red dots there. So I've already done that, and that means they own this. Now, there's still a little bit of C poking in here, and over the course of the game, the C is going to push us harder. Because if any of these dikes ever fail, that means water will spread from um, flooded zones into adjacent zones. And we lose if we ever run out of these flood cubes. That means the whole place is overrun, and uh, the Dutch just give up, I guess. So we're going to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, and who are we? Well, we're a couple of civic engineers. In this game, I'm going to be the hydraulic engineer. Jen is going to be a warehouse manager. She's the pink player. I am the brown player. We both start over here in Delfland. And by the way, before I go any farther, I just want to apologize to any Dutch viewers right now. I'm sure I'm going to completely mangle your language. I'm just going to mispronounce everything, especially because I'm looking at everything upside down. That's not helping either. But all I can say is, oh, please forgive me. I, 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 I beg your mercy. But anyway, so um, here we are. We both got our own special powers. And in regular pandemic, what you're trying to do, racing against the clock, is you are trying to get four things done. In pandemic, it's cure four different color diseases. In rising tide, we're trying to complete four major engineering projects. And these projects are actually based on real Dutch projects that have happened over the last couple hundred years. They're major feats of engineering. Uh, they're very, very proud of them, and they've allowed the, their country to flourish and grow. So we're going to try and complete these. Like the uh, the Delta Verk, uh, the, the Delta Verkin, Delta Verkin is one of our four objectives, and to do that, uh, one of us would have to move over to this space where you can see there's the symbol for it, and discard five orange, because it's the orange region, cards to be able to complete this project. And if we did that, hey, we would have done one of the four projects. Now, the nice thing is, unlike regular pandemic, where when you cure a disease, nothing really changes. You're just closer to winning. In this game, when you complete a project, you're closer to winning, and it does a big, cool, special power for you. In the case of this, when I do this, it allows me to instantly um, kind of shore up all the dikes in this area. And the different projects have different little bonuses they give you. But here's the thing. There's a bit of a twist. Instead of just trying to find five orange cards, five purple cards, yellow cards, and green cards, go to the appropriate place and discard them to win, like regular Pandemic, you can play an alternate way where you use a bunch of objective cards. The game comes with a deck of them, and as part of setup, you shuffle them up and give yourself one unique objective for each of the four colors. I've already done that. And the interesting thing is, two of my four objectives are the standard um, you know, uh, yeah, one of them is the Del Delta Verkin. The Delta Verkin. I do have to do this. One of us has to get four orange uh, five orange cards, get down here, and build it, and get the benefit. Like if I was playing regular. The other standard one is the, oh my goodness, the Normalisverkin. The, norm the Normalsverkin, I'm just going to say. Um, where we have to come over here and discard five um, matching yellowish cards to complete that and unlock its special ability, which is mentioned on the card. It's also mentioned on the board right down here, although you can't quite see it. So um, I'm kind of half playing a normal game of Rising Tide. Two of the four projects I have to do, but these other cards are different. I'm not completing. I do not have to complete the green or the purple project to win. I can still complete them if I want because, hey, they'll give us a benefit. But what I've got to do in the green zone is uh, ports on the Moss, which I guess is some river, the M-A-A-S, Ports on the Moss, I have to, or we have to build, was it, four ports in the green zones down here. So that's one of our objectives. Normally, uh, it doesn't matter whether you build ports or not, but here it's very important. And then the other one is a population objective up here in uh, Vodlopen. I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce it. I'm sure I'm entirely wrong. Basically, this area up here, Friesland and, uh, oh, Nor Norden Norden Zidvest. 
Norder's Vest, uh, close enough. Um, you know, these two regions up here, if I get five population, which are represented by these little orange cubes up in here, then I will can consider have completed this objective. Now, the interesting thing is this objective, um, once I complete it, it's not necessarily over because I can get, say, three people over here and two people over here. And you say, oh, look, I completed the objective. One of my objectives is done. But um, if this dike fails and this area starts flooding, some of these people will be kicked out. And they'll go over here to the population loss. And now the objective is no longer complete. And now I've got to shore this back up, cl clear the water out, and get more population in there. So that's an interesting thing. Um, just because I've got this completed doesn't mean it's done. This has to be done at the moment that the other three things are completed. But anyway, so I've got this population. And now, if none of the objectives required had a population requirement of getting a certain number of people in different areas, I wouldn't use these population cubes at all. And in fact, this population loss card would just go away. But I am playing with population cards. So that is one of my objectives. That's it. We're ready to go. And let's see who's going to be the first player. Just kind of go on ahead and randomize it. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Actually, we're, we're not quite ready yet because actually, I forgot. There's a little bit more setup to do. And I figured it'd be worth showing it because folks who are familiar with regular pandemic might wonder, well, how is this different? Here's the first way it's different. After you've laid out all the dikes on the board and the, uh, the country is, is, is in a good place. Granted, there's a few like uh, uh, Flavoland over here and uh, Markervard over here. They, they're a bit flooded. But hey, you know what? There are dikes. It's keeping the water at bay. But now, as part of setup, some of these dikes are going to fail. We draw three cards. Uh, just like Pandemic, and each one of these three regions is going to get hit three times. In Pandemic, we put three cubes down. In this game, we will remove three dikes. So, first one is uh, Zud Beveland. Zud Beveland, which I'm going to assume is South Bevelon, down here, it just lost all three of its dikes. Boom, boom, boom. That's not a good start. Okay. And let's see. Then the next one, it is uh, Idz... Idzil Delta. Idzil Delta over here in the yellow. And you know what? Even if you have a hard time finding the words, fortunately, the cards show you exactly where they are. So it's this one right here. It's also got to lose. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Our dikes are failing like crazy. That's not good. Alrighty. And then a third one. Uh, uh, Kenemerland. Kenemerland uh, over here in the purple zone right here. Oh no. It's right on the sea. It just lost all three of its. Uh, dikes. But you know what? We're not done yet, folks, because like regular pandemic, three places get hit with three, then three places get hit with two, and then three places get hit with one. So we're going to continue to watch some of our beautiful dikes fail. So we got three more that are going to lose two apiece. Let's go. Um, oh no! Uh, Kenemerland again gets hit. This is an interesting change to regular pandemic. There are two instances of every region card in this deck instead of one. So just when you think it's done, it could get hit again. So this area gets hit again. Now, unfortunately, there are no dikes to fail. So instead of pulling more dikes out, for every dike I can't pull out, I have to put water in. So it's flooding! Oh no! Um, I couldn't pull out three dikes, so I put three water down instead. Yikes, that's a very scary start, but we're not done yet. Um, uh, Ridge and Iz Izzel. Ridge and Izzel, way down here. Now, this one loses three. One, two, three. Okay, so it's just lost. A oh, no, two, 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 two. Okay, so actually, this is interesting because we're losing two here. Oh, and ah, I forgot. Only two should have been here because we were doing the double. So two should have shown up there, not three. Now, um, it, Ridge and Izzel, it, lose <laughs> it loses two. So it's my choice. These two. Are here, this one, I could take one of each, or I could take both of these, or um, let's see, which one am I going to do? Now, I got to worry, uh, because because of the flow of water, how you take these dikes off the board is really, really important. I think this area down here is really safe, though, so I'll go on ahead and let and you know, assume no water is going to flow through here, and I'll take one off of here, so that if this area becomes flooded, hey, at least this dike is still standing. So I took two from there. Now I've got another place. Delfland. Hey, our own hometown loses two. Ugh. Now, okay, so i got to take two off here. I'm not going to take this one off because this is the only thing standing between a Delfland and the sea. If I take this, the sea is going to rush right in. So i got to take two others. I'll take this one that's off in the distance, and I'll take this one that's down here to the south. All right. But we're not done yet. Now we draw three more cards, and each of these zones is going to get hit a single time. And so it's just like Pandemic. Uh, three places get hit three times, then two times, then one time. So, um, Ruhr and Overmoss. 
gets hit once, which is the one way down here. I'll just go on ahead and take uh, this. The Well, actually, it's the one down here. This is the only one. So it just lost its only dike. And what else we got? We got Freeze Lawn. Oh, no. Okay, Freeze Lawn. Again, I'm not going to pull this one off that would let the ocean come in. If I pull this one off, the uh, the Zuderze instead of the Nordze will come in. So let's go on ahead and do this one, which means now there is open water between Friesland and uh, Nordstrupper, um, which is not good. So we're going to get flooding anyway. Say la vie. And one more, uh, Markervald. I think that's the second time we've been hit here. Is that right? Uh, no, 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 we haven't. Okay, so Markervald gets loses one. And um, you know, this is the only one it's got, so it loses that. Okay. So, um, some of our beautiful dikes. Everything was so great a second ago, but now the dikes have started failing. And the last thing we do before we get going is I now have to deal with the consequence of this. There's going to be uh, a temporary water flows action. This is normally what happens at the end of every player's turn. We check to see how water flows. I'm going to do a special water flows right now as part of setup. And what that means is I have to look everywhere on the board where there are three cubes, three water cubes, and that means every connected space that's not blocked off gets two. And then I got to look, and right now there's no place where there are triple cubes. So I can skip that part. There's no triple cubes. Now I got to look every place where there's two cubes, and um, if they are next to something, um, that does um, that is dry. One cube will spill over into them. So now there's a few places where this is going to happen. Let's start over here in Flavorland. Flavorland has two cubes, and um, it is this dike is gone. So that means there's two cubes here. One cube now floods over here in uh, in the delta in this delta right there. And um, let's see. Over here in Nord's, uh, st blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, because this die came down, one uh, water is going to flood. Wherever there's doubles, they will flood and create singles in adjacents. Now then, did anything else happen? Yes. In our own, even though our main dike held to keep the sea out, this dike, or actually, oh, there is no dike here. So we've got... Uh, 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 Go. This zone, I'm going to stop, folks. I'm just going to say we're right over here. There's two. There's nothing. So we get flooding right in our own backyard. Anything else? There's a double here. Um, so it's interesting. The, uh, either from this zone or from this zone, you can see there's a little connector right there. From either of these zones, uh, since there were doubles, they wanted to put a single over here. And I don't see any place else where it needs to spread. Now, um, there's a single over here in Friesland. And hey, there's unconnected, uh, you know, it's unprotected over here to this zone. But singles don't spread. Doubles spread to become singles. Triples spread to become doubles. Singles don't spread at all. So, um, still, you know, not too bad. It could have been much worse. And the nice thing is, all up along the coast, all the way up to here, um, or, you know, all of these zones, all these dikes are still standing, so no water punch because these two cubes are considered, since they're part of the North Sea, to be adjacent to all of these zones all the way around here. But it looks like dikes, dikes, and dikes, 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 dikes. So, no more spreading. The game is now ready to begin. So, let's start playing. Who will be first? It'll be me or Jen. We'll go ahead and randomly choose, and it is Jen. Jen is up first, and what is she going to do? Well, as part of setup, everybody got a starting hand of cards, and they might look familiar to a pandemic. Hey, there's the there's cards for all the different regions. Jen's got two greens and a purple and a special event she can use whenever she wants. This special event moves any number of pawns um, to one region adjacent to either the uh, North Sea or the Zuder Sea, which I believe is the South Sea or this little inland sea here. So this is basically a teleport whenever we need it. And what is Jen going to do? Well, we got a list of all the stuff we can do. We can move around in all the normal pandemic ways, just move to adjacent areas or play cards to move farther. Um, we can pump water out. Jen, her first action could be, her first of four actions could be to pump this water out of the zone. Although at the end of her turn, the water is going to flow right back in here. So, um, you know, she can't keep it at bay unless she does one of her other actions, which would be to build a dike. We can, um, you know, build dikes, but you can only build a dike in a zone that has no water in it. So, Jen's first action could be to pump this water out, and then her second action could be 
to build a dike. And hey, now this area is dry again. It's safe from the spread of water until, well, until this dike fails again, which will probably happen later when we have to reshuffle this deck. Now, there's other stuff you can do as well. If you want to give up one of the cards in your hand when you are in that zone, so if you're in Flavoland, you can get, oh, which is right over here, you can give the Flavoland card up. Jen could do that to either build a port or a pumping station. Now, ports are nice because they let you teleport around. Um, basically, once you've built a port in a zone, it doesn't matter where you are, you can just instantly move to that port for free. So they basically create a teleportation network because, hey, because there's lots of waterways all over the place, we can always get to a port very easily because I guess there's always ships no matter where you are trying to get to ports that you've built. So that's what a port is for. Even more importantly, though, is a pumping station because uh, during a player's turn, during every player's turn, after they've done their actions, any pump on the board will activate and automatically remove a cube from the board. So we don't have to run around and take care of these cubes ourselves. Remember, there's a cube here. We can build pumps, and then the pumps can take care of the cubes for us, potentially, depending on how we've set things up. So, um, Jen, right off the bat, she could go um, one, two, uh, and then three, play this to build either a port or a pumping station. And then, hey, her fourth action could be to come over here and get ready to start, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, doing other stuff. What is she going to do? Well, let's ask, what is her special power? She is a warehouse manager. And that's interesting because she loves ports. Normally, ports are only good, like I said, for teleporting around. But the warehouse manager, if they're in a region with a port, they can give any region card to any player, anywhere. They can, because they've got their warehouse, they can ship these cards any place. Because regular pandemic rules say, if Jen, or let's say more to the point, remember, Jen um, wants to give me the... Uh, uh, you know, this purple card. We would both have to be in Flavoland, and then either she would give it to me or I would take it using an action. So it's hard to trade cards. But Jen, once she gets some ports built, she can start trading cards much more easily. Because remember, one of us has to get five orange cards and come down here to complete this project, and five yellow cards and come over here to complete this project. Now, me, in my hand, I've already got one yellow. Well, here's what I've just got um, one of each of the four colors of cards. So it makes sense for Jen to start building some ports so that she can start shuttling cards to me so that I can focus on completing those objectives. Plus, don't forget, we've got another goal. We, down in the, in the green Southlands, uh, we've got the ports on the moss. We've got to build four ports down there. And how interesting, Jen has two green cards. That means she could come to these regions and build ports there. So maybe that makes sense. So what is Jen going to do right off the bat? Well, here's the interesting thing. She could say, hey, you know what? I will say, oh, I'll pump this out, and then I'll build a dike, and then she'll start moving. But I am the hydraulics engineer. I am much better at building dikes than Jen. Because whenever I build dikes, I, for every action where I put one down, I get to place a bonus one for free. So that's really powerful. When you build when you build dike action, you may place one additional dike in that dike location. Again, as long as the location you're building isn't flooded. That's always important. So let's see here. Uh, I think then Jen's not going to worry about this little bit of flooding. She'll save that for my turn. Jen's going to head south um, and start building some ports to work on the ports on the moss. Uh, she needs to go to the Land Van Alten and the Land Van Mossenball. These are the two places she's got to go. Let's see. There's this one over here, and there is um, this one. All right. So this is a closer one. Jen will go one, two. That's two of her four actions. Three, she will discard this to build a port. And um, four, she'll just move to this adjacent zone, and that's it. So she got one of the four ports we have to build. Next turn, she'll be over here. She can get the second port built. And we're starting to build a transportation network. Plus, Jen will have an easier time um, giving me cards in the future. So Jen has done her four actions. Um, you know. And after that, we operate pumps. If we had put any pumps on the board, they would start pumping out water. But we haven't built any yet, so we skipped that phase. Now. We draw two cards. Jen increases her hand. And there's always a danger of storm cards which are the equivalent of uh, epidemic cards. So Jen got a yellow card and an orange card. OK, no storms. And now dikes fail. And this means we've got to draw two more 
cards. Um, you know, just like pandemic, as instead of viruses spreading, our dikes are going to start filing, which means water might start spreading. So let's see where we get hit. We got hot hit over in Lan Van Malisval, right where Jen was heading. So this one, she, she has to lose one. It could lose this or one of these two or this one. How about that? Since there's a double here, she'll just go on ahead and get rid of one of them. Now, whenever you're building, you can build doubles if you want to. Um, so anyway, so Jen got rid of that, so they're all still standing. That was the first of two she has to draw. And now the second of two she has to draw. Oh my gosh, more! R right where Jen came from! Um, right, so she could uh, kill that one, that one, that one, or that one. And again, this matters because once water starts getting down into these areas, which dikes we've gotten rid of will allow for the more ra rapid flow of water. Let's go on ahead and cut that one out. Okay, so Jen's turn is over, and now we have to check to see if water's flowed because if you know these dikes down here got hit, so nothing really changed. But if dikes had gotten hit over here, then more water was going to flow. But um, all the water is up here, so nothing bad happened. It is now my turn, and let's show you how a hydraulic engineer gets it done. My first action, I'm going to pump out this water. My second action is I'm going to build a dike. Anybody else would only be able to build one, but I get to build two. So I could build a second one here to really strengthen it up. Because remember, I know that um, you know th this is an area that could fall down again. Because if I recall correctly, I think a Delphin Lawn and both of these cards are in here. So this is an area that's going to get hit over and over again. So it might make sense for me to, to really strengthen that because it's going to be hit a lot. In fact, my first action I pumped, my second action I, I placed a dike plus a bonus. My third action, I'm going to do it again. I am really going to strengthen this area so that it's not going to fall for a while because eventually, like regular pandemic, we're going to take all these cards, put them back at the top of the deck, and this area is going to get hit a lot more, but I'm really strengthening it. And so, what am I going to do for a fourth action? I mean, heck, if I want, I can just stand here and just keep on, um, but... I would. See, the other thing I could do, though, instead of just really strengthening this, I could rush out and start trying to... The sooner we build a pumping station, the sooner it's going to start doing our work for us. Um, but here's the problem. If I, say, built a pumping station right here, it um, after I'm done, it would um, take out one water cube from any area that's connected via, via waterways to this pumping station. But then the problem is, at the end of the turn, that water would just flow right back. So, for me to build this pumping station, say, right here, could I actually, where could I build a pumping station? All right, okay, I've got um, marker board, right? So, uh, if I came here, I could build a pumping station here, but it's, it's open to the sea. So, water's just going to pour right back in here. Even if the water's getting pumped out, it'll just come right back unless I first build a dike right there. But then, even if I uh, fill this up, it's going to flood. The sea is flooding here, and then this will flood in here. So, my pump will never do any good. So, before I get that pump in position, I got to clear some of that water out. So I could be focusing on all that right now, but right now I'm just going to do some initial stuff. I want to keep our home area high and dry. So, but I got one more action. So I think my last action is I will move over to Markerwald so that in the next round, because I'm planning on building a pump here, I'll start trying to dike up the area a little bit more. Because remember, in my turn, I could put a dike here and here, and then instantly cut the area off, and the pump could start working on all of this water. As an example, so uh, I. Pumped the water out so that this was dry, and then I built a dike. I built a double dike again, and then I moved. My turn is over. Now I'm going to draw two cards, and I get another purple. And oops, I'm sorry. No, that's from the wrong deck. That's from the wrong deck. I draw from the player. Oh, I, I, I did this wrong. I, I drew. Sorry, I'm not used to playing from the top of the uh, card. Uh, these I should not have drawn these for Jen. These were the bad cards. These were the two cards Jen drew on her turn. And yeah, okay, no storm hits. Now it's my turn. I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw. And, of course, a storm is hit. All right. So, we're now going to have to put the game on hold for a little bit and watch all the bad stuff happens. Sea levels rise. Um, we're still only drawing two cards, and there's still only two um, cubes in the North Sea and the South Sea over here. All right. So, but I moved it up, and a major breach happens, which means, like Pandemic, I draw from the bottom of the deck. This zone, whatever it is, is going to get hit three times, like we did at the beginning. It is the uh, Gelderzee Valley. The Gelderzee Valley, oh no! Which is right here. This thing has to get hit three times. Now, this is a problem. There's only one dike here. So, that's one hit. There's no more dikes. So, two, three. Oh my gosh! Now, um, this dike is gone, so we're gonna get, the flooding is going to start heading into the Southland. Ah, sorry, folks. Uh, 
<coughs> Somebody uh, just showed up at the door. Uh, see here. So anyway, we're continuing with the storm. I think. Right. So we just drew the valley. It got hit. By the way, this is a valley because these two zones next to it, if you notice, they are kind of shaded in. That's because they're high ground. These areas, this area down here, um, these areas over here, these are still areas where players can walk around, but they're high ground. Water will never flood. So that's why this valley is now getting flooded because of the storm. So we had a major breach. That hit that. We drew one. And now, when it rains, it pours. Pandemic fans know how this goes. We now take this entire deck, we shuffle it back up, and we put it on top of the, uh, the disaster deck. And so all the areas that have already been hit, been hit can now start getting hit again. And we're still drawing two cards per. So let's see how that goes. And uh, I guess that's enough, enough shuffling. Wish me luck. And let's see. So at the end of my turn, we get hit in the What the? What are the chances? So the valley gets hit again, which means it has three. Now that's a problem. This is the first place where we got three water, which means two water is going to spill into adjacent areas. But we're not done yet. Another uh, place gets hit. And it is Delphlond. I just emptied you out, Delphlond. Now, fortunately, it's got to get hit. Hey, you know what? I prepared. We'll just lose one of our dikes in that area. There's still plenty more. And now, the last thing that happens is water flows. And things have changed. We've got to start with the triples. We've got a triple here, which means every adjacent zone has to have a double if it's not blocked off by a dike and if it's not high water. So this is adjacent. Flavalon is adjacent to the valley. It's got double, so it's fine. But right over where Jen is, uh, uh, bet, 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 we, why am I pronouncing these things? Just where Jen is, there's nothing. So two water just flowed in here. Okay. And, uh, there's no more triples. Now we got to look for doubles. Hey, there's a double up here. It would like to flow into adjacents as well. And because we've lost this one, it'll flow over here into this single. Um, and you see, there's no place else. This one's still here, so it doesn't flow in that direction or that direction. So um, the water is punching in, and we're running out of cubes. Remember, folks, if we completely run out of cubes and have to put more on the board, we lose. So we got to start um, cleaning this up. Now, is there anything else? I don't think anything else has changed. Yeah, so we've still got these doubles, but nothing else has fallen. So we're done. It is now Jen's turn again. Oh, my gosh. Hey everybody, let's take a break from the rising tide for a minute. If you'd like to go final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or continue to watch along in the extended playthrough. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.